the beautiful light. I do not know how many reasons there have to be for tears to fall from the soft gray sky, but I do know each drop is full of light, is full of beautiful light. I do know that the light falls and gathers around those who patiently wait outside for milk, for bread, and it collects along the bare tree branches and the broken edges of stone, filling up the quiet, forgotten corners. From the second floor bar of my hotel, I watch the tangled negotiations between the melancholy businessman and the young woman, until at last she shakes her head and slowly walks away. He leans after her on the ornate railing. His hand frames a plea, unfolds into a gesture of release. The shape of their separation begins to fill with light. It flares from the center of the emptiness between them. It is a beautiful light surrounding his open hand breaking over the curve of her shoulder through the golden strands of her hair as she turns her face away from his and moves across the marbled floor to the waiting elevator. In the deserted hotel lobby at midnight, a small TV set high on the wall It sweeps the empty floors with its flickering light. Inside this haunted doll's house, everything looks cold, and yet it is melting, fading away. Everything seems new, and yet, look closer. It is fraying, splintering, already wearing thin. Children pour down the giant museum staircase as if not noticing the marble and the worked gold. They thread from room to room, thicken and hold their breath beneath the canvases full of light, full of burning light. Outside, the golden domes swell and thrust upward in the clear air. Pointed buds wrapped in leaves of blue and gold rise up on thick stone stalks. Daylight goes early here, mid-afternoon twilight soaking into the trees, the snow. Fur-wrapped children are pulled on sleds. Their upturned faces answer with light, answer with beautiful light. Climb seven flights of stairs to see the artists' studios, paintings hung askew, unfinished drawings, tapestry. We drink tea and eat sweet bread among the rescued icons and precarious columns of old books. We listen to questions and answers 
softly shuffle back and forth through an interpreter. Soft glow caught on raised glasses, smiles. It spills across framed gestures of benediction and the muted gaze of the icons where the serene Christ and his radiant saints pierce time with sad, knowing eyes, deep wells of light, deep wells of echoing light. At our departure, upon request, our host offers a prayer of thanks, placing lit candle on table and door frame. As he pulls deep from an old prayer book, the soft words flutter in his chest and throat like a bird rising in flight. The murmured name of Jesus turns like a shining wheel in the moving water of his voice. Later, in a hospital, by an infant's bed, where wires run from a tiny sleeping child, a machine hums, and its throbbing light tells us how much the small heart works uphill with the blood, the breath. This light is a window high above our heads. It is a trembling star caught in each falling tear. And now I look out through a large window onto a silent, glistening landscape where the isolated shapes of passers-by struggle through the driving wind and snow. Somewhere beneath this radiant sheet of ice, the stone gives way to water. See how the sky descends and meets a distant line. Beneath that line, a sea of light, a sea of beautiful light.